Each veil of mine has different vibes or uses. There are some that are like more complex that I like to use in glamour magic or attraction magic. And there are others that I prefer to wear when I'm entering a situation that might be emotionally or spiritually taxing, like my comfort veils. The thing is, is like protection magic, like veiling um, as it is for me is gonna be different for everyone. I know people who buy veils from me and get enchantments are like, can I just wear it around my neck, um, around my like shoulders? I'm like, absolutely. Hi witches. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel, it's me, your local chaotic witch shot. If you're noticing that I'm wearing the same outfit as one of my previous videos, that's because I am, because I film in bulk. Anyways, today I'm gonna be talking about how I prepare my veils for wear. Wait, wear how I prepare my veils for wear. I actually have a stack of veils that you can't see right here because I'm gonna talk a little bit about like how I prepare them but also my relationship with veiling. So this is maybe just gonna be like a veiling frequently asked questions because a lot of people I think ask me a lot of questions about veiling because I am not uh, someone who is in a religion that veils. And I feel like a lot of people associate veiling with not only religion but s should associate also with certain cultures because certain cultures do veil. There's Jewish veiling, Muslim veiling, um, a lot of Italian nonnas veil, which is kind of why I veil. <laughs> there's veiling in the Ukraine, there's veiling in every culture, every continent, every place. I'm just one of many, and the way I do it is very personal to me, as you'll find I feel like a lot of people who follow me who veil, whether they're religious or not, or do it for religious re reasons or not, they do kind of have a personal reason for doing it as well, or there's a kind of a reason within the reason, I, I guess. Is that my way, <laughs> way I'm gonna say it? So a lot of people ask me, you know, how I prepare my veils a lot of the time. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that and then I'll talk about my relationship with um, some of the veils I wear, how I tie them, which is another big question, and kind of what I do to, I don't know. I'm just gonna talk about veiling. This is a veiling video. The main question I feel like should be answered is why would you cleanse a veil? Not everyone does, and this is definitely like a spiritual practitioner thing. I consider it good spiritual hygiene. It's just like a check-in. It's a cleansing, it's a cleaning, it's a literal like blank slate, especially if that veil has, in my opinion, absorbed a lot of negative shit that day. And I like to cleanse with a lot of different methods. Uh, smoke cleansing is my big one. You can sound cleanse, you can use an herbal spray. I like to use rue, hyssop, or juniper because those are kind of my three most protective herbal allies, my three most purifying herbal allies, and that is what I use. Um, I also use rue or St. John's water, St. John's water or l'acqua di San Giovanni is an Italian folk magic tradition that I participate in. This is my little bottle of St. John's water. And then this is my rue water that is throwing a hissy fit because I need new like like not spraying. I need new spray bottles, okay? If you know somewhere that sells spray bottles, let me know. I like spending time praying over it, saying incantations. I like to treat all of my veils as physical, living guides and spirits who help me because that is what they're doing. And one of the main reasons I veil, I will talk about this probably, I talk about like why I veil in um, by answering your questions about my practice video, so I'm not gonna go too much into that. But for me, I am, you know, doing it for a protective reason, and because I am doing it for a protective reason, I like to treat my veils as protective spirits. I do kind of consider them to have different personalities and different kind of vibes, which that's just the animist in me, you know? But I also have very specific prayers that I'll use over the veils, or like I do for my veil enchantments, I will create herbal blends and then write prayers and burn the ashes, burn the prayers on the piece of paper to ashes and then mix the ashes in with that herbal mix. And those herbal mixes are ones that I personally use, but also ones that I use for the veil enchantments in my shop. Each veil of mine has different vibes or uses. There are some that are like more complex that I like to use in glamour magic or attraction magic. And there are others that I prefer to wear when I'm entering a situation that might be emotionally or spiritually taxing, like my comfort veils. <laughs> The ones I typically just go to if I like am not sure what I want to do that day. I tend to work with the spirit of the veil rather than just treating it as a piece of fabric, even if it's subconsciously. I do think there's a little bit of color magic that comes into play here, because as I'm about to talk about, the veils that I tend to gravitate towards being more protective are the ones like this that are mostly black. This one has dogwood flowers on it, and I use that as a protective kind of ally as well. I have a stack of veils to go through, and I'll talk about some relationships and what I wear it for. This one is my other black one. And this is like the one that I wear 
mostly when I'm like just around the house or I use it when I need a little more protection. It's literally just like a black cotton linen veil. It's just very basic and I feel like the basic ones are the ones I gravitate towards. Um, if I'm wearing like a patterned sweater or something along those lines, I'll tend to choose more solid colors. And so that's why I wear this one. But I also consider it to be very protective. It's very comfortable for me to wear and that is one of the reasons that I kind of feel it's a more protective ally to me. Versus uh, some of my favorite pattern veils, this one I found in a vintage lot. And so this one has my grandma's two favorite flowers on it. <laughs> We have the rose and what looks to be Queen Anne's lace or something similar. And because of that and be kind of because of those associations, especially with rose, I like to use this a lot when I'm doing ancestor veneration or if I'm having a day where I'm gonna be doing more ancestor veneration, this is what I wear. And it just very much feels like a very loving protective energy, but also one that'll like keep you in check. <laughs> because of that ancestor association. My comfort, my some of my newer veils that I wear a lot are my pattern ones. This one uh, named Cyprian. I was gonna sell it and then I decided I couldn't because I love it. And this one's a little bit more decorative, but I tend to love wearing it around the house. Once again, very comfy. I love the colors. I feel like it can go with a lot of outfits. I feel like this veil is one that I wear when I feel like I don't need as much protection. Um, it feels very protective, but at the same time, it feels like it kind of lets in a little more energy. <laughs> I know that's strange. How can you let in energy if you're veiling? I don't know, dude, ask them. This is my favorite veil of all time that actually probably needs a little bit of a wash because it is a little dirty. There's a little bit of staining in the center and on the sides. So this one needs a little bit of a wash. Uh, I'll also go through how I wash my veils because everyone asks that too. So this is one of my favorite veils of all time. It is like a jacquard silk with a lovely border. And so this one I wear when I'm having a lighter day, when I want to be a little more confident, when I want to like do a little bit more glamour or attraction magic, or I'm doing a lot of spell work, anything along those lines, this is where that veil comes in like I said she needs a wash and this is also very comfy so whenever I'm going out or if I'm going out with friends if I'm going to a library I tend to wear more decorative veils if it's a fancier event this is one that I choose and then we're getting into kind of the lighter colors I wear uh, just when I feel like I need to wear I'm wearing a lot of dark colors I want to offset an outfit I go for a red this is anima this is from my store we still have anima in stock she's like a nice little cotton linen crinkle blend with some praying on the edges. Anima is just like a fucking energe energetic ass vibe. Okay, I wear this whenever I need energy. <laughs> whenever I'm like exhausted, like typically if I'm going to work on one of the days I go in at 8 a.m., I'm wearing this. Or I'm wearing this because this is uh, one of my favorites. It's a vintage tie-dye silk veil. And she, she's got the fucking energy vibes, you know? Like I wear this when I need a fucking boost. When I'm tired. I may wear it around the house as well. Although when I am around the house, I tend to choose something a little more simple, like a nice little solid colored green veil. This is my comfort veil. You will see me wear it a lot because I love it. I love the color. Um, it actually is kind of starting to show some signs of wear. There's a few runs and tears. Um, and it's like a kind of like a satin polyester blend or a silk polyester blend. Like it's definitely, you know, you can see some of the, some of the changes to it, but I keep wearing it cause I love it. It's my color and I haven't been able to find this exact color in this type of veil yet, which is very upsetting for me. The closest I have is Ruta, which is one of the veils I have in my shop. So right now, I, as I say, it is big fucking veil season. So I'm wearing a lot more veils that are bigger, except for today, because I was in like a small cotton mood because I'm filming and I, I still had to put, I wanted to put something on. But I wear a lot more of these in the summer just because it's hot. So I wear a lot more cotton veils in the summer. In the winter months, I tend to wear a lot more kind of longer, um, maybe silk or satin pieces, uh, and I'm a little more comfortable wearing those. I have a brown veil that I really like somewhere, but I couldn't find it. 
sometimes veils just kind of move around the house um, and whenever they move around the house I just I'm like okay I'm not supposed to wear you today <laughs> find you later so those are some of the relationships with veils that I have consecrating a veil or working with a veil for a specific reason it looks very different for depending on practitioners for me I'm doing a lot of color magic or glamour magic with my veils if a veil is lighter in color it kind of feels less protective to me darker in color more protective green grounding red attraction and that's just kind of how I operate and what I feel like I'm also subconsciously doing is I'm working with these veils but if you want to consecrate a veil or de dedicate it to a specific entity it's pretty for me simple it can be simple or it can be complex you can choose to leave it on their altar or around them for hours or like multiple days a moon cycle you can do a candle spell over it you can consecrate it or bless it with herbs and that are associated with that deity you can literally just kind of like put it on and be like i devote this to blank you know so it, it, it really is up to you in which way you want to do it and that that's kind of your thing and I'm also usually w working with the spirits of several herbs as I consecrate that veil and work with it um, I don't have except for the one with the flowers on it for my ancestors I don't actually have a veil that I wear for like Diana or Fortuna or Mercury or any of the deities that are in my practice I just kind of wear one and I'm like this is for you. <laughs> the other question I get a lot is how I how I wear my veils. I have a video on Instagram about it, but I I need a haircut. I look like a Karen. So I like square veils. This is a small square veil, cotton one. Um, as you can see, I've been wearing it a lot. It's really wrinkly on one side. I fold it in half. And then I'm gonna throw it over. Tie it at the back and scoot it to where I want it. Um, I like keeping a little bit of my hair out, but having the majority of my head covered, obviously you can roll it too and kind of fold it over so it's less or less long or longer. But with the bigger veils, I will take kind of this tail and keep it untucked and that's how I get the look that I have where you have like the side tails here and the kind of longer piece in the back. The other thing is washing them. So, it depends on the fabric. If you're doing silk, I really recommend you either dry clean it or hand wash it, which is complicated, but still. The other one, um, the kind of satin polyester blends, any ones that kind of look like this, I will hand wash. I mean, most of them I just hand wash because a lot of the veils I wear are vintage or they're silk or they're a fabric that I would prefer to kind of spend more time with. And when I wash it, I'm just using like Dawn dish soap, water warm or like lukewarm water and I'm spot treating it if you want to spot treat it get a little bit of Dawn dish soap um, and baking soda and this is for oil stains you can like rub it in there and then rinse it a lot of times when I am cleaning my veils I'm just spot treating them I don't try to unless that like I will wash these the cotton ones because I don't they're fine um, but I don't typically throw like a load of veils in the wash. I will hand wash them <laughs> because I don't want them damaged. I mean, honestly, it really is what you're comfortable with in terms of washing them because it's like, it depends on the fabric. That's why I, whenever I ask me that question, I'm like, I don't know which one. I do wash them, probably not as frequently as I should but also they're getting sprayed with like waters and stuff. And um, I mean, in the summer too, when I'm sweating a lot, these are getting washed a lot. But I do have like, you know, veil washing days where I hand wash them in like a basin, like an old lady, and I love it. <laughs> really depends on the fabric in the same way that veiling is with everything is that it kind of depends on your practice and the herbal allies you work with. Some veils I get and I'm like, you don't need a cleanse, you're good. Yeah, I just wear it. <laughs> and some veils are a little bit more like, oh, let's cleanse you and also dry clean you. It really depends on you as a practitioner, how much you want to do for preparation. For me, a lot of the time, I'm just putting this on and this is enough protection for me. But when I need a little extra, I'm you know wearing Vitae, my veiling spray or rue water. When I leave the house, I'm putting a little bit of one of my oils on the back of my neck 
Um, and maybe I'll be wearing some makeup as well. Thing is, is like protection magic, like veiling, um, as it is for me, is gonna be different for everyone. I know people who buy veils for me and get enchantments are like, can I just wear it around my neck, um, around my like shoulders? I'm like, absolutely. Not everyone is gonna wear them in the same style as me, and not everyone is gonna have the same relationship with veiling as me. That's how I prepare them. Uh, nice cleanse, maybe a little wash. Uh, then pop them on and in the days where I need a little more you know spray it with water the oil I put underneath um, is curse breaker and I put it on the back of my neck I also like wearing charm bundles under my veils for a little extra protection um, and that's something you can find in my shop or you can make your own not everything has to be bought from me they have like uh, some Italian charms on them. A mano fica, a cornicello, and a mano cornuto. And I could just kind of take it and pin it where it won't be seen, right here or further up. And I wear that throughout the day. I also typically anoint these because I don't like getting oil on my veils. So I will anoint the charm bundle and then go from there. My relationship with veiling has become so normal in my life that I'm just like, this is just what I do. And sometimes I don't have time to prepare all of my veils or put on rue water in the morning or put on an oil. Sometimes I just put a veil on and leave and that's what I do for that day. And that's okay. You don't have to prepare your veils in a super fancy way. Um, if you want, you could probably wash veils that are a little less of a sensitive fabric with like a little bit of a water. Um, you could spray it on them to cleanse them. Um, you could do sound cleansing. It really is up to you. It's up to your time limits. It's up to what you're comfortable with. Um, and I hope that I gave you some ideas for how to wear veils or how to prepare them in this video, but otherwise, uh, I don't have much to give. I mean, I really am not like a, I just be like wearing them, you know? I just be wearing veils. I'm trying to come up with like a veil lookbook for my YouTube, for my uh, Instagram, but I found that I wear a lot of black and it all looks like the same outfit. So <laughs> that'll come out at some point. But yeah, uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, turn the bell on, but absolutely no pressure. Siate Benedetti. I gotta wait for the cat to move. Look at her, she's just a baby. Mama's gotta get up and then I'll come back.